we're gonna leave the blinds open so everybody can see what a big failure you are. The biggest fast food chains aren't always welcomed with open arms outside of America. So here are 10 restaurant brands that failed internationally. Domino's in Italy. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Names like Pizza Hut and Little Caesars are as familiar as McDonald's and Taco Bell, but one franchise managed to make it to the top of the pizza franchise hill, Domino's. We made it! I don't believe it! Debuting back in the 1960s, Domino's has become the biggest pizza chain in America, with restaurants across the country and around the world. So one would think that Domino's making its way over to the birthplace of pizza would be a match made in heaven, right? Well, not so much. In 2015, Domino's opened its first restaurant in Italy in the city of Milan, with plans to open a further 880 pizzerias across the country. Unfortunately for the pizza giant, Italians weren't exactly thrilled with the taste and overall presentation of American pizza. Traditional pizza and its American cousin aren't exactly identical, with wild toppings such as ground beef, pineapple, and others that aren't items Italians were used to seeing on a pizza. With Italians choosing to dine elsewhere and the financial impact of the past few years, Domino's was forced to close up shop and say arrivederci to Italy for good. Taco Bell in Mexico we only really serve Mexican food. Mexican food. What can be said about one of the most recognizable and flavorful foods on earth? Delicious? Of course. Enjoyed by millions? Absolutely. And among the many fast food restaurants that serve up the savory dishes from south of the border, none are as popular as Taco Bell. Since the early 60s, Taco Bell has been delighting Mexican food aficionados with quick service and an inexpensive yet tasty menu across North America. So why not take the iconic Mexican food chain to the birthplace of traditional Mexican cuisine. Well, that's exactly what the folks over at Taco Bell headquarters decided to do back in 1992. The first Mexican Taco Bell opened in Mexico City, and it's safe to say that the American take on classic Mexican cuisine was not well received. Why? Upon entering the restaurant, Mexicans were not only confused by the not-so-authentic items on the menu, but patrons had no desire to sample the strange items. The Mexican food giant was forced to alter some of their menu items, changing the name of the hard taco shell to the tacostada, as it was closer to a tostada. The franchise managed to last for about two years before finally accepting defeat and heading back north. However, this was not the last time Taco Bell would attempt to break into the Mexican market. In 2007, Taco Bell again tried to open restaurants south of the border, this time with a more American menu, with ice cream and french fries now being an option. But once once again, Mexican patrons were not impressed with what the fast food giant was offering, and Taco Bell was forced to leave the country for the second time. Third time's the charm? Uh, yeah, probably not. Wendy's in the EU. I'm hungry, Th those things look good. Bet your ass they do, Morty. That's the breakfast baconator, frosty chino, and honey butter chicken biscuit. Across Europe, one thing is for certain, Europeans love food. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Whether you happen to find yourself eating a buttery croissant in France or a paella in Spain, Europeans know a thing or two about delicious food. Fast food has also become a European staple. Much like North America, fast food is a quick, relatively cheap, and flavorful alternative to traditional meals for Europeans on the go. Among the most popular items is the all-American hamburger. Throughout the EU, many of the most famous fast food hamburger chains have sprouted up, such as McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. In the 1980s, Wendy's in particular brought its old-fashioned square hamburger hamburgers across the pond with restaurants opening up in Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. However, a trademark issue caused a significant problem for the burger chain in 1995. There was a fish and chips restaurant in the Netherlands, which also happened to have the name Wendy's, causing the hamburger chain to not only close all its locations, but also not allowing any new locations to open within the EU. While the famous hamburger franchise continues to battle to open franchises within the EU, Wendy's was able to enter England after the country left the EU. Better luck next time, Dave. Starbucks in Israel. Large black coffee. Do you mean a venti? 
No, I mean a lot. Tel Aviv has an immense coffee culture, with the city sporting many varieties of both cafes for locals and trendy tourist coffee shops for foreign visitors to experience. Within each of the many coffee shops scattered throughout the Israeli city is a vibe unique to each shop, making for an original experience each time you take a step inside. Tel Aviv's coffee culture has also managed to blend influences from other parts of the Middle East as well as surrounding parts of the Mediterranean, like Italy, for the best coffee experience possible. Unfortunately for American coffee king Starbucks, this was the environment the franchise was entering back in 2001. With the odds pretty heavily stacked against the company from the beginning, Starbucks struggled to find a place among the established cafes in Tel Aviv. Israelis didn't much care for the drinks Starbucks is famous for, and the swift, efficient pace of the American coffee giant did not mesh well with the Israeli patrons, who enjoyed savoring their coffee. With the company unable to adapt to the established Tel Aviv coffee culture, Starbucks ended up closing down its Israeli locations in 2003. I can't take it, Jerry. It's too much. It's too much. While many in North America tend to consider Starbucks gourmet coffee, the coffee franchise was simply out of place within that part of the Middle East. McDonald's in Vietnam. I hate Vietnam. Asian food is not only flavorful, but also fascinating. Utilizing ingredients that are quite literally foreign to North America, Asian cuisine has an exotic lure that many in the Western world find irresistible. In fact, you're likely to spot restaurants serving up classics like Korean barbecue or Japanese sushi across the country. Western food, by that same token, has also become popular in parts of Asia. It's not out of the ordinary to find people in Japan enjoying a slice of pizza or someone in Vietnam having a piece of southern fried chicken for lunch. However, not all famous fast food has made a positive impression in Asia. In 2014, McDonald's opened up in Vietnam to initial excitement. Unfortunately, the excitement didn't last, as patrons were less than impressed with the overly fried items on the menu, as well as the high calorie count. This, combined with the drastic taste difference, meant that McDonald's days in Vietnam were numbered. It is what it is. McDonald's was not the only burger franchise to attempt to break into the Vietnamese market. That same year saw Burger King open locations in the South Asian country only to succumb to the same fate as its burger franchise rival. With an overwhelming amount of fast food competition in the form of street vendors and the inability to incorporate Vietnamese flavors into their products, McDonald's didn't stand a chance in Vietnam. McDonald's does, however, have a strong presence throughout the rest of Asia, so Ronald can't be too concerned. KFC in Norway. Look at the panel on your right and tell me your recipe. Original. How many pieces? Six. Flavor heading? Tasty. Norway isn't a country known for its cuisine. The northern nation has a rich history involving Vikings and 24-hour daylight in the summer. But when it comes to food, Norway likely isn't the first place you think of when it comes to tasty international dishes. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that many fast food franchises have tried to set up shop within the frosty country. Among them, the fried chicken mega chain KFC. Fried chicken is fry fry chicky chick. KFC has been expanding internationally for many years with the franchise having hundreds of locations across the world. After all, who doesn't enjoy biting into a crispy piece of the Colonel's secret recipe chicken? This is why KFC has proven to be a success. However, if you happen to be a resident of Norway, you'll find yourself without a piece of the Colonel's famous crispy chicken. Due to the high expenses of importing chicken into Norway, it simply didn't make financial sense to continue opening KFC restaurants within the country. However, there is a glimmer of hope for chicken lovers in other parts of northern Scandinavia, as there are KFC locations in Finland and Sweden. It's a bit of a drive, but those 11 herbs and spices might be too finger-licking good to ignore. Baskin Robbins in South Africa. Lick, lick, lick. It's an ice cream cone. <laughs> Sweet treats come in many forms, and most would agree there are few things better. Anything from a slice of birthday cake to a piece of Swiss chocolate, you don't have to have a sweet tooth to indulge in the occasional treat. When it comes to hitting the spot on a nice summer evening, what better way to do so than with some ice cream? Most people around the world wouldn't argue with that, as ice cream in any form is an international delight, with many nations having their own take on the classic frozen dessert. Italy's gelato 
avocado is so rich and flavorful that a small portion is more than enough. But a country that seems to lack its own version of the sweet treat is South Africa. So for ice cream giant Baskin Robbins to attempt to bring all 31 flavors over to the African nation, it seemed to make perfect sense. Unfortunately, the people of South Africa found the 31 flavors to be a bit of a problem. Sometimes keeping it simple is the best course of action, as South African patrons were overwhelmed with the amount of options. I'll have a, a... In fact, the myriad of options was such a problem that South African customers found the plethora of choices rather intimidating. This, combined with the ice cream chain targeting the upper middle class clientele rather than a broader demographic, meant that Baskin Robbins' days in South Africa were numbered. McDonald's in Iceland. Not good enough. Iceland is known as the land of fire and ice. With a combination of icy glaciers and lava-spewing volcanoes, Iceland is one of the most visually iconic nations on the planet. So when the equally iconic fast food giant McDonald's made its way to Iceland's frosty shores back in 1993, the combination should have been a perfect match. And that's exactly what it was. For a while, anyway. Hungry Icelanders showed up in droves, all eager to finally taste the world famous Miss McDonald's menu. Unfortunately, patrons soon grew tired of the Golden Arches and found interest in the other fast food giants that had also made their way across the ocean and landed franchises within Iceland. Things only got worse for McDonald's when the 2008 recession hit Iceland, with the island nation being among the nations to be hit the hardest. How sad is that? The recession had a major impact on the value of Iceland's currency, which caused a major price increase for McDonald's ingredients. McDonald's decided to increase prices to compensate for the rising import prices, while smaller local businesses faced bankruptcy. This affected McDonald's enough to have to close its restaurants and head back to American shores. Subway in Japan Japan? What is, what is, what's happening in Japan? What, what, why is she going to Japan? Japan has much more to offer than simply sushi and tempura. With many Japanese foodies developing a taste for international fast food, a large majority of the giant franchises have made their way to join the local Japanese restaurants. Mega franchises like McDonald's, KFC, and Burger King are all big favorites in Japan. But one franchise that seemingly had no place in the country was Subway. In 2019, several Subway franchises around Tokyo filed for bankruptcy. This was not without precedent, as 200 other locations around Japan had all suffered the same fate years before. The larger prices for the single sandwich offered at Subway didn't help to sell the franchise to the Japanese people. Sorry, you guys, but I can't pay that. It's too much money. While burgers have become a Japanese favorite, sandwiches just never seem to catch on in the same way. McDonald's in Russia The chances of this happening in Russia yeah. Undoubtedly, one of the most recognizable logos all over the planet is the iconic golden arches that have come to symbolize the fast food mega franchise that is a McDonald's. The burger super chain has made its presence known as far away as China, Africa, and even India, with each location offering nation-specific menu items on top of familiar classics. Russia is one of the many countries that longed for a taste of the world-famous Big Mac, and in 1990, the nation got their wish. Moscow was the first Russian city to have a McDonald's, and the country never looked back. Russians were able to enjoy Happy Meals and Quarter Pounders until 2022. No! Unfortunately for both McDonald's and for the Russian citizens, the burger franchise opted to remove over 800 of its locations from the country due to the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. McDonald's officials have cited a humanitarian crisis, differing ethics, and a slew of other reasons for exiting Russia. Nothing is more important than the health and well-being of innocent people, and the burger giant seems to agree. Oh, right. Well, that is good to know. Tune in to more great videos. Videos. Just tap or click. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.